Today's video is going to be a bit different, but I think helpful to you my fellow PC gamers. And especially for you out there that has the same specs or close enough to mine, I hope this video will answer this question for you. Is the RTX 3080 enough to game at ultra wide 1440p with ultra high or at least very high graphic settings given our hardware specs? Let's find out after this intro. Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well, hope you're all staying safe. Hmm? Hmm? So it is finally here. I've waited for like a month to get this bad boy and I can tell you now, it was worth the wait. Obviously the first thing I wanted to do is to benchmark it with several of the games in my library and while doing my tests I realized I should probably make a video out of it to help my fellow PC gamers. See, I remember before buying this card, I watched a lot of benchmarking videos and couldn't quite find the one with exactly the same specs as I have. And the thing is, my rig is actually not that high-end anymore, so you can check the details of my rig in the description down below. So I was like, will my CPU and motherboard be a bottleneck? Enough so that I won't be able to bump up the game settings to ultra high, or at least very high. Because in my previous card, the GTX 1070, I mostly just had high settings on average, and I sometimes even had to lower some of the values down to the middle. So another thing I wanted to point out when I started testing the card, without tweaking anything like under vaulting or fan configuration, the GPU temps were a bit high to my liking, and the fan sounded like there's a uh, mini jet engine inside my desktop. So I spent a lot of time doing some more research and that's where I found out the concept of undervolting and tweaking fan speeds. And man, it was like night and day. So shout out first to WCCF Tech TV for his very helpful video on undervolting. And shout out as well to New Jobs from Reddit for his fan configuration settings. I'll put their links in the description down below. And one last thing. This is not by any means a professional benchmarking video, and I don't have tons of knowledge on doing those type of videos. But hopefully, the FPS meter or other information I will show will be sufficient for your purposes. Besides, there are a lot of other fellow YouTubers out there that specialize on that type of content, so you have tons of other sources if you need, if you need more info. So, without further ado, let me show you the FPS results for some of the games I tested this with.
Okay, let's go! Job, guys. So remember, we have to okay, defend. We got him. We got <laughs> Yet darkness spreads from abroad and threatens your kingdom. The threat is real. It must be faced. To the east, the greedy merchant princes of Marienburg conspire to consolidate their riches. Observe that much wealth flows into Marienburg, but very little emerges. Further south, in the Grey Mountains, greenskins and dwarfs vie for control of the peaks. Whoever wins may yet cause trouble for you, my lord. Troops begin to flee. Run the The champion made a poor choice. Zip line deployed. friends. Reloading. Making contact with the enemy. Good. We're inside.
settings, can grab graphics, graphics quality. Cycle with left or right, con frame rate limit, graphics. Graphics. V-Sync, v audio, home. Tab one. Set a drop point for your team, soldier. You've got gas closing in fast. Get to the safe zone. Voila, that's the place. Stand by to drop. Targets are up. Get to work. I'll stop the bleeding. Taking right, fire! All right, all done. You've probably noticed that in some games, I changed the values of a certain setting or two, but only because based from my research on that game, those can be lowered without any noticeable effect in graphics quality while boosting the FPS. For example, in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you might have noticed that just tweaking that one setting improved the lighting. In some resource-intensive games like, again, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I did notice occasional drops lower than 30 frames per second, and the card temps got a bit higher to my liking and causing the fans to be a bit noisy again. Perhaps in some of these games, I might have to reduce the quality from ultra to very high or whatever's a step below the maximum graphics quality, but we'll see. Hopefully next year, I'll be able to upgrade my CPU and motherboard. Now that would be the best solution. But I think with my current setup, it's safe to say that although there's indeed a bottleneck, the FPS and graphics quality is still way more than acceptable. So Cyberpunk 2077. We are ready. So, there you go. I hope you found the information in this video useful. Hope you liked the vid, and if you like it, appreciate if you can give it a thumbs up. And hey, 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 this is a gaming channel, so if that is a content you like watching, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. As always, stay safe and thanks for watching. This is Kenra signing off. <laughs>